going to Venezuela. So everything up to this point has been all COVID-19. Of course, that's the leading kind of story in the world right now. But there's other there are issues getting buried underneath the heave of COVID-19 um, articles, which is that we are once again escalating with Venezuela for no reason. Um, if you recall, I believe it was last year in 2019. It might have actually been in 2018, though, when we just declared Juan Guaido, the president of uh, Venezuela, just like, it's him, because we don't like Maduro. Venezuela has been kind of this punching bag uh, for the right for a long time. And, you know, it's just kind of continued on that way. So we don't like Maduro. We said, Juan, Gu Juan Guaido, you are the president of Venezuela and a whole bunch of other, like, Western uh, European countries did the exact same thing, like, just declared him uh, the president. And it didn't work. Like, we, we just tried to do a coup and it didn't work. The, the people of Venezuela stuck with Maduro. Maduro um, was, I believe, elected you know, some years back. I'm not exactly sure. Um, yeah, and so now with um, COVID-19 dominating the news cycle, we're able to escalate more with Venezuela. So recently we actually put some, um, I don't know if they were battleships, but we, we stationed some ships outside of Venezuela with this idea that, oh, Maduro is involved in a narcotics trade. And so it's because of Venezuela that all these drugs are getting the U.S. There's like a giant bounty on Maduro's head and like all of his top officials. And so it's just, it's nonsense. There's no reason for it. Um, but it, this is just standard fare in Washington, D.C. right now is you just look at the head of another state make up charges against them, put a bounty on their head, and then send your military over to surround that nation and, you know, start rattling the saber. Um, so, where was I going? Yeah. Yeah, so we're gonna, there's a, Pompeo posted something on Twitter, this quote, I'm gonna read it out. Um, so this was on April 8th, which was this past Wednesday, Pompeo tweeted, quotes, Thank you to the... Oh, I can't read my own handwriting. Thank you to the dozens of countries that have expressed support for the new Venezuela framework. It's time for Maduro to go and replace his illegitimate dictatorship with a legitimate transitional government that can hold free and fair elections to represent all Venezuelans. All right. So let's start off with illegitimate dictatorship. This is just asserted by um, Pompeo and the Trump administration. Just, yep, they're illegitimate and they are a dictatorship. I'm not defending Maduro. I'm not saying, no, this is, you know, it, it's wonderful stuff. But it's it's absurd that they're just coming in there and be like, you're not legitimate and you're a dictatorship. They might be a dictatorship. I It doesn't matter at the end of the day because it's, well, it's not in the U.S.'s interest. But furthermore, for Pompeo to say that we want a legitimate transitional government and like we're gonna the u.s gets to choose what that government is and what makes it legitimate is just it's laughable it's it's a joke and for i'm assuming they mean juan guaido because at the recent state of the union address like juan guaido showed up randomly and you had like nancy pelosi giving a, him a standing ovation for just being present like <laughs> this dude is He's just showing up at a bunch of random, like, you know, Western European nations and, like, the U.S. and Canada just, just, like, thunderous applause. Like, you know, he's some kind of celebrity. And then he goes back to his home country and he gets off the plane just gets manhandled by his own citizens. Like, how can you say that this is the, you know, the legitimate leader of Venezuela and they need to institute him so he can be a transitional leader? Like, that's absolute bullshit. And it's preposterous to claim that in the first place but then to go on further and be like oh yeah to hold free and fair elections like yeah here in the u.s we're doing free and fair elections with you know voter suppression and holding a primer in the middle of a pandemic you're you're a great example for what venezuela can aspire to be um but that's kind of thing is we've wanted to topple maduro we've wanted to take out the leadership in venezuela for quite some time now and with the news stories just being the way they are, this so easily gets buried. Like, you're not going to see, you wouldn't see it before, but now you're definitely not going to see, like, CNN 
or MSNBC coming out there and being like, oh, look at this, like, this is, um, the United States is trying to interfere with, you know, another nation's election, actually MSNBC, it would be funny if MSNBC did that because they've been saying, you know, Russia's been interfering with our election. That's, but that's beside the point. Um, nobody's going to pick this up. It's only going to be like left-wing outlets, uh, that you probably already know. They're looking at this like, this is, this should not be happening. And they're getting away with a lot more than they should be able to get away with because COVID-19 is rampaging. But really like this is just showing our priorities. We have the secretary of state, um, going out there and just Keep going with what his predetermined conclusions were. You know, just like I said, Naomi Klein's shock doctrine. This is almost ex no, it's it's not exactly um, what my understanding of it. Again, I haven't read the book. I know I need to read the book. It's it's going to be read, but that's the thing is now there is this cover through uh, for which you know Mike Pompeo and the Trump administration can just do what they've always wanted to do, and it won't even come close to being covered. Now I wouldn't be surprised. I don't think he's invoked this yet, but I wouldn't be surprised. If, you know, the U.S. government starts to pivot and be like, actually, yeah, we need to replace Maduro because look at how poorly he's, you know, co he's um, covering, doing, treating, I'm, I'm blanking on my word, how he's governing this COVID-19 pandemic. It's so poor. We need a, a true legitimate leader because somebody who is democratically elected would not, you know, let this happen under their administration. Just some nonsense like that. And that's their justification for Juan Guaido uh, taking over the the country. So, you know, it, it's just showing how our priorities are all messed up, how we're still going ham with just our geopolitical blunderings. Like, there's we're failing, you know, across the country with these wars and, like, stoking up tensions. And... Now, like, we're not even having a reckoning and being like, oh, shit, maybe there's more important stuff we can focus on, but we're not going to focus on it. Instead, we are just going to keep going with our predetermined goals and make sure that we that we get them this time now that we have the media cover.